Good evening and welcome to the Telegraph Journal and Rogers TV presentation of the local campaign candidate debate for the writing of Fundy Royal. I'm your moderator, J.P. Lewis, and we are live from the Rogers studio in St. John, New Brunswick. Tonight's debate will focus on the federal issues and Fundy Royal as the people of the riding select a member of parliament in the federal election on Monday, October 19th, 2015. The order of the candidates has been determined by a draw prior to coming to stage. Joining me are Rob Moore from the Conservative Party, Jennifer McKenzie from the New Democratic Party, Elena Lockhart from the Liberal Party, independent candidate David Amos, and from the Green Party, Stephanie Coburn. Next, please welcome our panelists for the evening. First, we have Laurel Lyle from CHSJ and Caitlin Dean from the Telegraph Journal. Both are journalists for media outlets in Greater St. John. First of all, the rules of the debate. Each candidate will begin with a 30-second introduction opening statement. Then the first candidate will be posed a question from our panelists. The candidate will have 60 seconds to respond. Each of the remaining candidates will also have 60 seconds to provide a rebuttal response. After all the candidates have commented, there will be a two minute and 30 second moderated discussion on the question. All candidates are encouraged to participate in the discussion. As moderator, I will guide the discussion to the best of my ability. Tonight, we will attempt to ask as many questions as possible during this broadcast. As we near the end of the debate, the open discussion may be altered in order to ensure all candidates have equal time for closing statements. The closing statements will be delivered in reverse order and each candidate will be given 90 seconds for their final remarks. First, we begin with Rob Moore and his opening comments. Well, thank you. I'm Rob Moore and I've been pleased to be the Member of Parliament for Fundy Royal. My focus as Member of Parliament has been to deliver real results for families, for the communities in Fundy Royal and for our region. And it is an honour to serve as a Member of Parliament and I'm pleased to be the Conservative candidate for Fundy Royal in the election on October 19th. Ms. McKenzie? Good evening. I'm Jennifer McKenzie. I'm a proud New Brunswicker. I'm an electrical engineer by training, and I spent the first 20 years of my career in high tech growing small businesses. I took those skills to the school board where my children went to school, and we went from declining enrollment and closures to increasing enrollment and an international reputation for success. I managed a, a, a budget of almost a billion dollars. I joined the NDP because their values match very well with my own, and they match very well with the riding of Fundy Royal, uh, founded on farming, agriculture, healthcare, and small business. I would look forward to working with the people in Fundy Royal to make us grow fl and flourish and prosper. Ms. Lockhart. Hi, my name is Elena Lockhart. I'm a lifelong member of this community and a business owner in Sussex. I'm proud to stand here tonight as your candidate for the Liberal Party of Canada because I believe that the Liberal Party has put together a plan and a team that has the potential to move this riding forward. I look forward to the opportunity of discussing the issues with you this evening and talking about our plan for Fundy Royal. Thank you. Mr. Amos. Good evening, folks. David Amos. Uh, Eleven years ago, I ran in Fundy Royal. Lots have happened since. I hope a lot of the questions pertain to the economy. That's my forte. I hope people pay attention to their pensions and savings. I think there's a recession coming. Ms. Coburn? Hi, I'm Stephanie Coburn. My husband and I have a, a beef farm in the Millstream Valley. We raised three children, and I ran and managed a business, uh, at Winterwood Natural Foods in Sussex, for 25 years. I became interested in uh, in the Green Party because it seemed to me that the decisions federally and provincially that were being made were, were had lacked common sense and humanity and I was very interested in advancing some really good ideas with some really good vision with the Green Party of Canada. Thank, thank you. Now we'll go to our, our first question from uh, Laura. Thank you. The unemployment rate for Canada was 7% in August. In New Brunswick it was 10.1%. What would you do to boost employment in that region? Thank you for the question. And Canada has a job creation record since the height of the economic downturn that is the envy of the whole world. We've created uh, 1.3 million net new jobs since the height of the economic downturn. Uh, we're focused on jobs. We're focused on uh, having a balanced budget. Canada 
is the only G7 country that will have a balanced budget this year. That's something that, as Canadians, we should all be proud of. We've been, uh, as a government, focusing on important matters here in Fundy Royal. Tourism is a very um, big, uh, very big driver in Fundy Royal. And through our federal tourism strategy, we've been focusing on enhancing our tourism assets. Uh, since becoming Member of Parliament, we've invested in such things as completion of the Fundy Trail, which is going to be an important economic driver, the cruise ship terminal in St. John, as well as over $40 million invested in one of our anchor tourism assets, uh, Fundy National Park. One of the th essential ingredients, as I see it, to uh, develop our economy here is to take an advantage of natural resource development, and that includes the uh, pipeline from west to eastern Canada. St. John... Oh, this is a, the real doorstep issue in Fundy Royal. Um, as was mentioned, the unemployment rate is uh, very high, um, and uh, we have a lot of people out of work. We have very high-skilled laborers who are unemployed. There are people who are holding down two and three jobs just to make ends meet. Uh, Mr. Moore speaks of the height of the economic downturn, but it's actually the depth of the economic downturn. We still haven't recovered the number of jobs in Canada to meet the number of jobs we had before the downturn. Uh, we, are the only second, we are the only G7 country in a second recession right now, and uh, um, New Brunswick has been in recession, of course, for, for, for much longer. We have tourism, but we also have agriculture and uh, uh, resources that make us a very rich and very diverse and very capable riding. We have failed, and the conservative, Harper Conservative government has failed to build on these uh, resources and on the skills of the people in Fundy Royal. The, the economy certainly is a, a topic that we're talking about on every doorstep. And the reality is that our party is the only one that right now is positioned to invest in the economy. Um, we're talking about significant investments in infrastructure, supporting our middle class, investing in workers and training. These are the real solutions that will move this area forward. And I fear with further austerity, we will just slip further and further back. Uh, Fundy Royal needs investment now. And as a business owner, I understand there's times when you would like to have a surplus, but there's times when uh, things like employment rates would cause you to invest. And this is one of those times. Mr. Amos? Um, long time ago, but not so far away, I was a young man, created my own business, self-employed and employed people. I think it would behoove the government to assist young people who are unemployed to help them start their own business of whatever they find interesting that suits them. They just want to get out of bed and go to work, love their job. So I would assist young people in startup companies, make sure they pay back their loans, just not free money, but assist them in starting a business of their choosing. That would relieve the unemployment. Ms. Colbert? Well, I find a lot to agree with here. Um, our, the Green Party really has an in, in, interest in small business. 70% of the jobs in the country are, uh, are grown by small business, not large corporations. And in the past many years now, we see federal and provincial governments concentrating on subsidizing large businesses. They, they, they're, they're subsidizing the oil and gas industry, for instance, federally and provincially to the tune of a billion dollars a year. If we took that money and used it to help give small loans to people to start their own businesses, I see a huge amount of entrepreneurship in New Brunswick. I see lots of young people wanting to start agriculture uh, farms and processing. If we kept our agriculture, our, our food money in the province, 93% of our food is imported. If we kept those dollars in the province, that would be a huge economic boost to New Brunswick. Thank you, Ms. Colbert. Uh, now we move to the open uh, discussion on the question, of, again, about unemployment. We'll start this time with the, Mr. Moore. Yeah, as I was saying, the West East Pipeline, we have um, resources that are be, be not being uh, value added from Alberta. We have the opportunity to refine them at the East Coast's largest oil refinery, Canada's largest oil refinery. And we've heard the other leaders, the leader of the NDP, the leader of the Liberal Party, 
uh, speak negatively about the West East Pipeline. We know that Mr. Mulcair went to the U.S. to speak against the Keystone XL Pipeline. We need to be able to take advantage of Canada's natural resources. This is a nation-building project, a project that will allow us in this region to have good, high-paying jobs and to add value to our resources in Canada, that oil and to okay, ship them, we're going to give uh, everyone a chance, and to so. ship them to, through the world through our wonderful port that we're investing sixty-eight million dollars in well, right now. The price of oil right now doesn't make the uh, uh, the oil and gas industry the place to invest. The NDP has an innovation tax credit. We're looking at infrastructure spending, and we're investing in small businesses. As Stephanie said, this is where the growth, the job growth of the country, is coming from. Small businesses. Investing in large corporations and the 1% has not worked. It does not work in Fundy Royal. And we need a new approach. We need the NDP approach, which is the values of small businesses, farmers, uh, agricultural, building on the minerals and uh, uh, resources that we have here in Fundy Royal, and putting the people who have highly skilled labor back to work in Ms. Fundy Walker? Royal. Well, I find it interesting that uh, the Harper government is talking about the pipeline and the opportunities here in New Brunswick, because the reality is we haven't laid one kilometer of pipeline in the last 10 years. And it's because the members of the communities are not at the table. Uh, people have lost faith in, in the National Energy Board and how it's reviewing um, the evidence. And we need to get back to that if we're looking at progress. Mr. Amos? As an independent candidate, I'm entitled to my own opinion, and I don't follow any party line. Just so anybody understands me, I'm not against the tar sands. I'm as much a sinner as the next guy when it comes to burning gas, using plastic, and has to be sourced from somewhere. I understand the need for a pipeline to salt water because of NAFTA. We don't get a fair price from the states. The last thing we need is another pipeline going south to give the Americans cheap oil. But making work because of a pipeline? No way. That work will come from a far land pipeline, and as soon as the bitumen lands on the coast, it's off somewhere else. It won't provide any employment, that's for sure. But I agree with the pipeline in the sense of selling it overseas to get a world price. I disagree with going south to give Americans more cheap product. But uh, I don't think it'll make any work for the Maritimes, and I think they're dreaming they're going to have to get that pipeline through Quebec, and Quebec's offering a strong resistance to it. And the final word on the topic to Ms. Coburn. Well, we're talking about employment, and the, the pipeline um, offers 140 jobs after it's built. And uh, it doesn't offer uh, jobs at the refinery because it comes to us in a, in a form that the, this refinery in St. John can't handle. It's, it's totally flow through, so and we're being asked to, to hazard our water supply because it's, co it's, it's crossing 250 water courses in New Brunswick. Um, we're we're tr going to trade our water supply for, for a flow-through product. There was, a, there was a leak in Kalamazoo, Michigan that still hasn't been cleaned up of this dill bit. Nexen in northern Alberta had a leak. They, ne they had state-of-the-art pipeline, but it leaked for weeks before anybody found out about it. I just don't think the trade-off is worth it for 140 jobs. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next question. We started with unemployment. We ended up talking about the pipeline. We knew we'd talk about the pipeline, but we'll, we'll go to Caitlin for the next question. There are fresh statistics that suggest that New Brunswick has one of the oldest, popula the oldest population in the country. And often rural areas, much of Funday Royal, which much of Funday Royal is, uh, has a more aged population than the urban. What role should the federal government play in dealing with this silver tsunami? Ms. McKenzie? Well, we have to respect our seniors. They've done a lot for us over the years, and it's, uh, they're a very important segment of our population. Uh, we have an aging population, and we are also losing our, our youth. They have to leave the, uh, the riding to find work, and that leaves us with a very imbalanced population. It affects our communities, it affects our families, and it affects our seniors. The NDP has a very strong platform for seniors. Uh, we believe in investing in seniors and making sure that they can live happy, happy, healthy, productive lives. We have a home care program, we have long-term <coughs> care, and we're investing in pharma care. Um, we believe that seniors should stay in their communities as long as possible, and the values uh, that the NDP espouse are very consistent with uh, keeping seniors uh, safe and secure in their own homes. Ms. Lockhart? 
Seniors are, are definitely a significant part of our community, and I heard someone say one time that they're not the elderly, they're the elders, and they should be treated as such. And one of the things that uh, we need to do is make sure that we strengthen their options for retirement. Um, wh on what we're talking about, first of all, is, is returning the age of retirement to 65 from 67, working with the premiers to strengthen CPP and EI so that increases are indexed and uh, seniors can depend on the retirement income. And speaking of that, uh, we do believe in maintaining pension uh, splitting for seniors and uh, would certainly support them in that. Also, with our health care, uh, we need to be looking at home care as well. And uh, we made an announcement today suggesting such that we would support home care and initiatives to keep seniors in their homes for longer. Uh, pharma care as well. As well. Uh, talk to, far, uh, to seniors who are unable to afford all their, all their medications. So we can do better with these things, and seniors are looking for leadership from the federal level. Mr. Amos? Silver tsunami. I resemble that remark. I am a baby boomer and I am collecting my pension. The young folks should appreciate that part of the tsunami because there's so many of us baby boomers that will be retiring. There might be some work for the unemployed. But as an elderly soul, I certainly hope we take good care of us. I would like to see Pharmacare, number one, uh, the pricing in Canada doesn't make any sense when we offer cheap pharmaceuticals to the rest of the world. So they certainly should do something about the price of drugs in Canada. The other thing, too, is old folks' homes. We're going to need more of them. And then the staffing in those old folks' homes aren't paid very well. I think if they were better compensated, more people would seek employment in there. And I, being an old folk, I hope people take care of me well in the near future. Ms. Colbert? Well, it, encompassing senior care it, is, is uh, we have, we are proposing a guaranteed livable income all across Canada. That will take care of seniors and it will also lift an awful lot of people out of poverty. If we, if we spent what we needed on a guaranteed livable income across the country, we would be spending about $43 billion. But that would be replacing $180 billion that we're spending on all the programs now. And it would simplify things an awful lot. Um, the Green Party was the first party to advance the idea of pharmacare. But at the same time, we really need to think very hard about the, the free trade agreement that is purportedly being about to be signed in Florida because the TPP is going to really hinder our abilities to, um, to keep the price of drugs low because the, the, the pharmaceutical companies are so powerful, they're um, pushing these restrictions on, on our country if we sign these free trade agreements. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Moore? Yes, thank you. You know, when we hear that there's too many seniors, I disagree strongly with that remark. The problem is too many of our young people have had to go west for work. And I heard um, candidate after candidate today speak uh, negatively towards the West East Pipeline. We're looking for opportunities that we can provide a strong economy. Without a strong economy and a strong base, we cannot provide the services that are necessary for all of us. As a government, we have been very uh, supportive of our seniors. We've increased the age credit for seniors. We've doubled the pension credit for seniors. This allows them to keep more of their money without the government getting its hands on it. We've also introduced pension income splitting, which the other parties opposed. Pension income splitting allows seniors to save more of their money to provide for their services. Now, we've seen what happened under a liberal government here in the last year. In the last year, we've seen seniors having sleepless nights over the thought of losing their home or having to uh, lose their assets or their spouse losing their home because they're in an old uh, uh, seniors home. That is absolutely not right. We need to focus on supporting our seniors and we may, need to make sure that they're able to keep more of their assets. Okay, now we're going to go to the uh, open discussion segment. We're going to start with uh, Ms. McKenzie. I think the Harper Conservatives have a lot to answer for in terms of the aging demographics of this province. We do not have an economy where the youth can stay and participate uh, in the job market. Um, it is really important that we do invigorate the economy, but to uh, hang it all on the pipeline seems a little bit uh, um, short, well, long-sided maybe. It's not coming for quite some time. There's a great deal that can be done other than that. 
The NDP is looking at, uh, and, and I also would disagree that uh, we are not in favor of pension splitting because the NDP are clearly in support of that as well. We're also um, going to increase the guaranteed income su supplement and restore the retirement age from 65 back to 65. I think seniors have a lot to fear as well in terms of the, the health care funding. We're going to a per capita model of health care funding, which will decrease the amount of funding we get okay, in New Brunswick you, for health care. Move on to uh, Ms. Lockhart. Uh, Mr. Moore has brought up the fact of the provincial government and the hard decisions that they're having to make in New Brunswick. And I would just like to say, you know, the Premier has come to the Prime Minister and talked about priorities in New Brunswick, but the Prime Minister is not interested right now in uh, talking to premiers, nor has he been for 10 years. It, it's not a beg. Uh, we have priorities here and we need to be talking with them. And Justin Trudeau is open to meeting with the premiers and talking about what are real challenges here and moving forward, including how we care for our seniors. Mr. Amos? Well, as Clinton had on his desk, it's the economy, stupid. And as I said, uh, while well, my forte is money, I caused hearings at the U.S. Senate Banking Committee in Washington in November of 2003 about the mutual fund industry. The liberal mandate of the 38th Parliament knew it and every Parliament since then. In 2008, we had quite a recession. They think it's recovered. The stock market is higher than it's ever bid with no trade supporting it. It could tumble farther, faster, overnight. Anything old folks should be concerned about is their pension. I certainly hope people Google my name and check my work. Ms. Colbert? Well, I, I, um, I totally disagree with the pipeline, and I'll reiterate that again. I think hanging our economy on oil and gas was a big mistake. The Green Party wants to diversify the economy and grow it from the bottom up. A government doesn't make jobs. If they do, they're a mistake because they, they take the money that the government gives them and run, as we're seeing with the call centers here. People make jobs. They make the jobs that are important in their communities and what they need is some government support for that. And for the final comments during the open discussion, Mr. Moore. Well, I understand why the Liberals want to distance themselves from the record of this provincial Liberal government, but the fact is both Brian Gallant and Justin Trudeau have used the expression, those that can pay a little more should pay a little more. And New Brunswick seniors found out who Liberals think are those that can pay a little more when they tried to raid their hard-earned uh, whether it's their house or their assets, and they try to take that from them. As a government, we've been providing direct support to seniors through the increase in the pension credit, pension income splitting, raising the GIS that has lifted many seniors out of poverty, and on the issue of health transfers. Health transfers to New Brunswick and transfers in, in general have never been higher. Health transfers to New Brunswick from our government from the time we took office have increased by 44 percent. That contrasts when the Liberals were in power federally when health transfers to the provinces were slashed by 25 billion dollars. Thanks Mr. Moore. Uh Wrapping up that section, we'll move to Laura for another, uh, another question. Amnesty International states that over half of Syria's entire population is currently displaced. How do you think Canada should respond to the Syrian refugee crisis and what role can New Brunswick play? We'll start, start with Ms. Lockhart. Sure. The refugee uh, situation in Syria is a tragic one and Canada on an international stage has always played the leader in such cases. So not only do we have an opportunity to welcome refugees here, um, we need to do that responsibly and we need to, to do that in a way that they are able to integrate into our communities and uh, be prosperous and contribute. New Brunswick has declining uh, growth right now and, and there is an opportunity not only for refugees but for immigrants uh, to come here and build a new life. Having said that, uh, you know, there's things that we can do on a an, an, uh, humanitarian level as well in Syria and uh, we're committed to doing that and making a, a greater investment in our on the ground uh, activities there as well. Mr. Amos? That's a tough one. Uh, we're all immigrants or children of immigrants and we shouldn't deny anyone else the same advantage we had. Uh, on the subject of immigration, Canada's generally punched above its weight in that regard and I think we should continue to do so. I would like to see them bring families in first and foremost. It's about my only opinion on it. I, would encourage the immigration as long as it's families first, and that's about it. Thank you. Ms. Colbert? Well, the Green Party and has been disappointed in, 
in the way that the latest governments for the last 20 years have changed our, our public profile in the world. We, we've gone from being uh, a respected di diplomatic country to bombing Syria in about 30 years. And it's, 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 it, I think it's terrible. I think we should have communities welcoming refugees, and the government should be facilitating that. And we should go from being a, a country that is trying to spend billions of dollars on, on uh, very expensive jet fighters to, a, uh, to a, com a country, again, whose emphasis is on, on blue hats from the UN. Mr. Moore? I have to take issue with that last comment. We are not bombing Syria. We have a, an international terrorist organization called ISIL that has declared war on Canada and on Western values. And all you have to do is go onto the internet or the nightly news and you can see the type of atrocities that are taking place. Our approach has damage. to be to support refugees, no doubt. There is persecuted minorities, persecuted religious minorities in this region. And Canada has always done its part and will continue to do its part. We have to make sure our, our refugee program provides security for Canadians while also welcoming genuine refugees. But the idea that the world can continue to take refugees without combating ISIL is not getting to the cause of the issue. There is entire countries now, we look at Syria, you look at Iraq, that are being overrun by this terrorist organization that has declared war with our values and will not stop until it is stopped. So we cannot, we, the world will never be able to accommodate the refugee issue until we have two prongs. One, helping those refugees, but two, we have to combat and defeat ISIL, and only our government is standing up with the, with the world to combat ISIL. Ms. McKenzie? Well, the, we have not been uh, keeping our, our word in, ter in terms of uh, bringing in the number of refugees that, uh, that we had uh, set out to do. Um, the NDP has been holding the conser Harper Conservative government's feet to the fire and making sure that, uh, that, w that they uh, do address the refugee issue problem in a, in a serious manner. Um, the uh, situation in Syria and Iraq is, is complicated and going in and sending fighter jet bombers is as likely to do as much harm as it is to do good. We're going to create more um, terrorism than we solve unless we do it in a measured way and work with other countries, including the UN, to um, make sure that uh, funding to the uh, uh, ISIL terrorists is cut off and, uh, and, and uh, the weapon supply is also cut off. Um, it is important for Canada to bring in refugees, and you asked in your question about what New Brunswickers would like to do. New Brunswickers' hearts went out when they saw the little boy on the beach, and many of the churches in New Brunswick would like to bring in refugee fami families, as well as many of the communities. We have a very welcoming community environment here, and we could host uh, the refugee but, families very well. Thank you, Ms. McKenzie. Uh, and now we have time for open discussion. I think really picking up there, what foreign policy issues are you maybe hearing at the doorsteps? What foreign policy issues are important to Fundy Royal? Well, I think, I think there's, there's two things. Uh, the current government has instilled a fear in people, uh, so they're trying to process that fear and uh, what is reasonable. And aside from that, they're also worried about employment, and, and that's the other piece about bringing people into the country. Now, the reality is that we can do both. We can help uh, our, our international refugees, and we can grow our economy. Um, but the two don't have to be mutually exclusive. Mr. Amos? Foreign policy is a big one. Anybody can Google my name and Julian Assange and see that he and I were once associated. But he released documents from the Department of Foreign Affairs that supported what I was complaining about to the Harper government for years, and that was that uh, Canadian officers were involved in the planning of the war in Iraq in 2002. That was under a liberal mandate. Now I've come to an understanding of the reason that Mr. Harper committed our troops to combat in 2006 before it was even discussed <laughs> in Parliament has to do with mining industries and gold and the border provinces of Pakistan and Afghanistan. And just as soon as the deal fell through and a Chinese interest stepped up to the plate, we're out of Afghanistan. Foreign policy irks me. 
Big time. Ms. Colbert? Well, I'll just reiterate that I think Canada's role should be the, that of a negotiator. We, we were famous years ago uh, being negotiators and really, really respected in the world. We lost our seat on the Security Council. Canada's, Canada's international reputation is in tatters. We left the Kyoto Accord. It, it's just a series of foreign policy mistakes that I think this, this last government has been doing over the last 10 years. And we would really like to have a full group of people go to the COP talks in uh, Paris in December with all of the parties represented. Mr. Mark? I guess what I've heard here seems completely out of touch with what I've been hearing at the door. I mean, the NDP have said, bombing ISIL can create terrorism, and our liberal candidate is saying our government is creating fear. Fear was created in this country, and we're forgetting it was a year ago, there was multiple terrorist attacks here in Canada. To think that we shouldn't, and it's not our number one responsibility as a government to act, both domestically and internationally, to protect Canadians from terrorism is quite frankly offensive to me. I know that the priorities of, uh, of Canadians are to be generous to genuine refugees, but to make sure that Canada is engaged in this fight against terrorism. And to anyone to think, it's kind of sanctimonious for us to be here and think that this couldn't touch on us again. Of course it can. It has. This group has declared war on Western values and it's declared war on Canada. We cannot blame Canada for that. It's declared war on us because of what's right with our country. It's because we believe in equality between men and women. We believe in democracy. The thing that we're gathered here today, the democratic process, ISIL does not believe in those things. They don't believe in equality. They don't believe in human rights and they don't believe in democracy. And as long as our country does, they'll be against us. And I'm not willing to give those things up. Ms. McKenzie, with the final comments on this round of open discussion. Well, the Harper Conservatives are running a campaign on fear and greed, and I think Mr. Moore has uh, shown uh, a lot of the confusing and muddying that they are doing of the issues. Uh, ISIL did not uh, cause uh, the uh, terrorist activity at 9-11, and uh, the Harper Conservatives do like to uh, muddy the waters by confusing everybody that we have one common enemy in, in religious grounds. We do have to take national security very seriously, and we have been. Well, there you know, are well, refugees the that have attack. been pre-screened by the UN, and they are ready to come, but we have not welcomed them in, into our country. Um, New Brunswickers are ready to welcome the, the families, and that's what I'm hearing at the doorstep, uh, quite contrary to, uh, uh, to Mr. Moore. We have been peacekeepers in the past, and we do need to get back to being peacekeepers now and in the future. The, uh, the role that we're playing on the international stage is not gaining us respect, it is losing respect. Okay, we'll move on now to the next question from Caitlin. Trade Minister Ed Bass is currently negotiating the Trans-Pacific Partnership right now. Dairy farmers in New Brunswick argue uh, that allowing any more international dairy products would make it hard for New Brunswick farms to compete. There are a number of dairy farms in Fundy Royal. How will your party respond to the concerns that changes to the supply management could spell the end of New Brunswick's family dairy farms? And we're going to start with Mr. Amos. If there's any reason for the dairy farmers to vote for an independent, it's now. <laughs> I am death against NAFTA. You can see what the Kings County record said, I said about the topic 11 years ago. I'm death against free trade. There's a reason the tariffs were put there in the first place, and that's to protect the home market first. How could we compete with other places uh, with milk and butter and the, the environment that they rear their stock in? Of course we should protect the dairy farmers. That is the mainstay of this riding, <laughs> it always was until the potash mine landed in town. I think this free trade nonsense is just that, nonsense. And I side with every farmer that wants to protest on it. And if they want somebody to bite politicians in Ottawa, they should vote independent this time. Ms. Colbert? Well, we were d dairy farmers uh, when we first bought the farm in the mill stream. And uh, one of the reasons we came here to do that was because of the, uh, uh, the, the protection that we could get through the, the, da the dairy industry here. Because in the United States, if a dairy doesn't want to pick up your milk, they don't have to, and you completely lose that. And they can give you the lowest possible price um, 
and it, you don't make a living down there. They're subsidized in the states. Most other agriculture systems are subsidized. The dairy industry in, in Canada is not subsidized. But we can see the intention of this government is to to dis destroy the supply management system in Canada. They have, they have um, against the wishes of an awful lot of grain farmers in the West, they have destroyed the wheat board, which was the s selling desk of the, of the grain farmers out West, and they have their eyes on the, on the other supply management systems. The Trans-Pacific Partnership, as well as the, the uh, European Free Trade Agreement, are are binding us in ways so that we can't even buy local in our in our um, schools if we want to. We we're subject to more uh, uh, what are they called? We're being sued by more companies. The government of Canada is being sued by more companies than any other place in the world because we're we leave ourselves open to this in our free trade agreements. Mr. Moore. Yeah, you know, I'll make something perfectly clear. When, when our government uh, came to power, Canada had three free trade agreements with three countries. Now there's over 50. Canada is a trading country. We look at New Brunswick. We look at the wood that we have, the oil that we have, the potash that we have. All of those go to international markets. You look at Canada's auto sector, 85% go to international markets. Now one thing has been abundantly clear, in each and every one of those negotiations, we have defended our dairy farmers and our supply management system. We negotiated the Canada-Europe Trade Agreement, an agreement that gives us duty-free access for lobster, for uh, all of our resources to the European Union, 500 million customers. We did that while protecting and maintaining supply management. And any future agreements that we would enter into are in the best interest of the entire country as a trading country and will protect supply management. That is our commitment. We're committed to the supply management system. Ms. McKenzie? Well, we have a lot to thank farmers for, for putting the food on the table every day that we rely on. The dairy farmers of New Brunswick have a great deal to be concerned about, and I am hearing concerns uh, from farmers uh, at the door, and they are also taking the time to write about their concerns. Uh, this government has uh, a reputation, and uh, that is uh, some of the uh, foundation for the concerns. We, they sold the Canadian Wheat Board uh, to a, a conglomeration that included Saudi Arabians. Um, the, uh, the, the partnership agreements that, uh, that Rob has talked about, including the European one, uh, opened up the market to cheese, which is another concern that would uh, uh, be of uh, significance to the dairy farmers. The NDP is a, a party that is founded in agriculture, founded in farming, and founded in small businesses. We would protect food security, we would protect supply management to make sure that farmers are able to earn a good living, and uh, we would al uh, allow new farmers to come in and uh, grow and prosper uh, as, uh, in, in contrast to the shrinking number of farmers that we have now. Well, I've spoken with the Dairy Farmers Association in New Brunswick and as well as many other individual farmers. And, and although uh, the Conservative government says now that they're protecting supply management, they're very worried and there's a reason for it. They, they really haven't been able to get the information they need to feel secure. And supply management is uh, key to, to every farmer. It, it's literally what you can take to the bank. Uh, we need to, we, as a party, we've always uh, supported supply management. We will continue going forward. It's, uh, we, we're in hopes that we're not dealing with a, an agreement that's already signed, but that may be the reality. And if so, uh, we'll work with farmers to uh, look at alternatives and, and how we're going to deal with the, the fact that we've got several countries in, in the trade agreement that have a glut of milk and that would love to put it in Canada. So we're going to continue with this open discussion on trade. Coming back to you, Mr. Amos. Uh, there's so many topics there, but... Uh, the, the, People in Fundy Royal and the Maritimes in general, we are, have so many natural assets, it's amazing, from our mineral wealth to oil to lumber. The big, big issue is water. Uh, bowing to the Green Party and the issues of uh, fresh water, that is probably the most important asset we have in the near future. The, we are next to New England. Uh, water in a bottle costs more than gas, for Christ's sake. Oops, excuse me. <laughs> for God's sake. Anyway, uh, P 
People should be jealous of our assets. We should be as rich as Arabs for our oil, our mining assets, our wood, our water. Who denies us that? The federal governments. His boss, Mr. Harper, called Maritimers defeatists. My question is, who's been beating us up? Ms. Colbert? Well, we're, the reason that we are poor in this province is because we're exporting all our natural resources without getting the right, uh, the right royalties for it. The, the, uh, the oil pipeline would take the oil and flow it through right into ships, sail away somewhere. We wouldn't get anything for that. The wood that, that the Crown lands, now the provincial government is paying, uh, losing $10 million a year on Crown lands. We're not, the royalty agreements that, that governments make for Canadians and, and in New Brunswick especially are, are terrible agreements. We, they, they don't think that the resource itself has any value. It's only the work that people do to get it out of New Brunswick that seems to have any value. They're only interested in the jobs. Swar? Nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, first, on, on the pipeline issue, this is all about value added. It's businesses like the refinery and others that can set up here because they have access to a Canadian product that can add, that is being shipped without value added now, that we can add value to here in New Brunswick. These are good jobs. I hear a bunch of people talking about how things can't get done, and we're trying to get some things done so people can have jobs here. The very jobs that young people are going out west to do. On the issue of, of dairy and supply management. Sussex is dairy town. Dairy is the heart of this riding in Fundy Royal. Dairy farmers make up the background, uh, the backbone of our, of our region, and we've supported them as a government. We increase this lifetime capital gains exemption when a farmer passes on the farm to a, uh, to a son or daughter. We've closed loopholes that farmers were concerned about, like the pizza kit loophole that was bringing in cheese around our supply management system. We invoked Article 25 of NAFTA to protect our dairy farmers. And in any trade negotiation that takes place, including the Trans-Pacific Partnership, we will defend our dairy farmers and our supply management system because it works. Ms. McKenzie? Well, a lot of the problems have occurred because these trade deals are being negotiated in secret and rushed through. And it's very consistent with the Harper Conservatives' uh, tactics of putting through omnibus, omnibus bills and uh, doing things uh, without proper scrutiny. It is imperative that we protect our farmers, protect our food supplies, protect our water, uh, and protect uh, our agriculture. Uh, the Harper Conservatives have uh, catered to corporations and large businesses at the expense of the smaller farmers. And that is why we have gone from three free, free trade deals to over 50. Uh, we have to take things in a careful and measured way. We have to make sure people have input to the types of deals that are coming through and make sure that everybody's voice is heard so that we can uh, make some really good, well-informed decisions, not the type that, uh, that are in the interest of lobby groups and large corporations. Ms. Lockhart? Well, I, th I think uh, everybody has a very good opinion on TPP and, and on farmers, and I'm glad that we all recognize that farmers are the heart of Fundy Royal in many ways. And uh, you know what, I, I come from a farming background, my grandparents are farmers, and I understand it. And I will work hard for farmers to make sure that they do have their place. And when we're talking about international trade agreements, and of course we want to trade, um, you know, we have all these raw resources that uh, we do need to do. But it has to be for the benefit of those here in Fundy Royal. You know, so our, our economy is not progressing, even though we have 50 trade agreements and what have you. Everything's leaving and, and nobody's seeing any real benefits. So we're not doing it right and we can do it better and I will work to do that. So I, I have questions about the pizza kit loophole, but I'll save those for later. Um, let's end on uh, our last open discussion question. Just very simple. We're, we're running out of time. Um, 30 second answer. Uh, you get to Ottawa. What's the first thing uh, you tell your leader or you push in Parliament uh, as an independent? Um, to get uh, the economy of New Brunswick going? Well, I feel very fortunate that our leader is very open uh, to talking with us as members, uh, potential members, candidates, about what the real challenges are here. And I think that's been missing for a long time. We've certainly had a strong voice from Ottawa in Fundy Royal, but it's time for Fundy Royal to have a strong voice in Ottawa about what our challenges are. And those challenges are about the middle class family and how it's harder and harder to make ends meet. And uh, we have a plan for that. We'll reduce taxes for the middle class, provide a uh, childcare benefit that will put money back in the pockets of the middle class. 
the middle class is thriving, then the whole economy thrives. And uh, it allows us to take care of those that are more vulnerable in our society. Mr. Harris? I think I'd follow uh, the American Jim Traffickett, the congressman that they sent to prison. <laughs> he tabled basically an act, for want of a better word, we'll call it an accountability act. But instead of bureaucrats being accountable, let's make the parliamentarians accountable. Make them responsible for what they say and do. That's what Jim Traffickett did, and they sent him to prison. I think I'd try it. I'd put a private member's bill in. Ms. Colbert? Yes, well, the Green Party is uh, very interested in accountability as well, uh, provincially and federally. And our provincial leader is um, working on an accountability uh, bill here in, in New Brunswick. But the first thing I think I would do is, is uh, look around a little and see what I could do. Um, the, the Green Party is the only party in Parliament that doesn't whip the vote. So if my constituents were to tell me something, and I take, I, they have two, we have two, and, but this is a principle that we have, no whipped votes, and we are going to stick by our principle. The other parties force their members to vote the party line. The Green Party will not do that. Mr. Moore? My focus would remain on delivering real results for our communities. The evidence of that focus is throughout Fundy Royal, whether it's the Qplex or the pool in Sussex or the arena in Petticodiac, the Fundy Trail, Fundy National Park. I have a proven record on delivering for the communities in Fundy Royal, but also delivering direct benefits to families in Fundy Royal. That has been and will always remain my focus, whether it's the universal child care benefit, income splitting for seniors, or the family tax cut. Those are all the things that I've, those are the type of things I've fought for, including ending the gun registry. That was a long, hard fight, and it's a fight that uh, we cannot forget because we would have to revisit that if there's a change in government. So I'll continue to fight for the families in Fundy Royal that I've been fighting for. Ms. McKenzie? Well, <clears throat> Fundy Royal needs good, long, sustainable economic development, not the, uh, the kind that just comes along at election time. Um, the NDP has some really great ideas, and I would make it my priority to go to uh, Parliament Hill to make sure that some of these ideas are put to maximum use as quickly as possible for Fundy Royal. Uh, we have a, a plank in our platform in tourism, forestry, providing value-added manufacturing to resources. I would look at the health care and daycare and make sure that we had the full economic development that goes along with those two policy platforms. We're not panicking on the economy. We're not uh, uh, pro pro proposing for tax cuts and increased social spending that will lead to austerity in three or four years' time, as the Liberals are doing. We have a good, steady hand on the tiller. We have really strong social, environmental, and economic uh, platform planks. And I really look forward to taking those and making those work for the people of Fundy Royal. Thanks, Ms. McKenzie. So we, we just have a few minutes before uh, we get to closing statements, uh, so I wouldn't mind pursuing the, uh, the party discipline uh, topic a bit. Uh, we already know Mr. Amos's view, Ms. Colburn saying that the, the Greens aren't whipped. Uh, to the three of you, just a short answer. Uh, the, the, your par party forms government. Your constituents disagree with a government bill. Would you vote against your government, starting with Ms. Lockhart? You know what, I think we have to talk about hypothetical bills, but uh, the reality is that yes, I am there to represent my constituents. Uh, and absolutely, if there was a, something that was on the table that was detrimental to our area, uh, that would stifle growth, I, I believe that I would have the liberty to do that. Ms. Martin? That's always the case. Your number one responsibility is to your constituents, and I've been pleased when we voted on things like the volunteer firefighters tax credit, the universal child care benefit, when we voted for funding for uh, economic action plans that have provided direct results here. I've supported all those things, and I'm willing to oppose things that I oppose. We look at, uh, for example, the gun registry, a controversial issue in some parties. The, when the NDP had a vote on that, and we voted to end the gun registry, two of their members voted with us. Those two members were kicked out of the caucus. So the Liberals and the NDP have a far worse record on people having free votes than our party. If you look at the voting record, the Conservative Party has more people vote opposite each other than, than the Liberals or the NDP. The Green Party, of course, had one member, so usually there's unanimity in that vote. Ms. McKenzie? Well, I'm very... I'm very fortunate. Uh, my values, the NDP values, align very, very closely with those of Fundy Royal. 
the platform that we have right now will, I believe, really help Fundy Royal to do some real economic development and to grow and flourish and, and prosper. Yes, if there ever came a time, and I I'm, can't see it, that uh, the NDP did not put something that was in the best interest of the people of Fundy Royal, I would uh, take a good hard look at that. Uh, but right now, with child care, senior care, health care, all of these things are, I think, of huge benefit to the people of Fundy Royal, and I really look forward to making sure that they are implemented to maximum benefit. Very quick follow-ups from uh, Mr. Anderson. I'm not a party member, that's obvious. I do believe the Greens won't whip their vote. But the other parties most definitely do, and they ostracize those that don't go with the crowd. There is no democracy when there's no democracy within your party. You all must do what your leader says, or you're out. Democracy doesn't exist within any of your parties. I don't care what you claim as and you just, get elected. Well, just One final briefly, note. briefly, the parliamentary office, the uh, office of the prime minister, has achieved a huge amount of power, and MPs are directed how to vote by this this office that it isn't elected. It's the prime minister's office, and that and the and the combination of whipping the votes. Makes, makes it a very undemocratic place right now, I'm afraid. So now we're moving to closing statements and going in reverse order from our opening statements. We'll start with uh, Ms. Coburn from the Green Party. Well, the Green Party has been called a party of one issue, the, the, the environment. As you've seen from my remarks tonight, we have many uh, good ideas about the economy, about justice, and about uh, health care. Pharmacare is one of our original ideas. But I would like to talk a bit about the oil and gas industry and climate change. The, the Pope has come out and said that climate change is the issue of our day. Today, um, what's his name? Uh, Dodge came out today. Uh, he was, he was the, um, the director of the Bank of Canada. He came out today and said climate change is the issue of the day. If we don't fix it now, it'll be terribly expensive. The, the sooner we do something about climate change, the better. And to say on one hand that we have to do something about climate change, and on, on the other hand that we have to dig up more oil sands and ship them through a pipeline to, to other countries, increasing our greenhouse gas emissions hugely, how can people hold those two things in their head at the same time? The pipeline isn't good for us nationally. It isn't good for us internationally because of climate change. It's a really bad idea all the way around. Mr. Amos? Food for thought for the folks in Fundy. I am a local. My father's buried in Riverview. My mom's 92 years old and lives with Quiz Pam Sis. I know everybody in between. Here's a good reason to vote NDP this time. It's going to, it is an interesting election, and it's shaping up to be a minority government. Don't know the color of the coat yet, but it looks like a minority government. Chuck Cabman in the 38th Parliament proved the power of one independent. He saved uh, Paul Martin's government on May 19th, 2005. I am, if there were such a thing, I would be like my forefathers, a progressive conservative, but they're long dead. R.B. Bennett, I think, was the last true progressive conservative prime minister, and they forgot who he was. He created the Bank of Canada and the Wheat Board. That said, if the people in Fundy were to elect an independent, he could get more for the people in Fundy Royal than any party member, because they would all court his vote. A true representative of Fundy would only vote for the benefit of his constituents and not be whipped by any party member. He's there to deal in the best interests of the electorate to put him there. I would say, ask around about me and see if I'm a straight shooter. Instead of holding your nose and not voting conservative, everybody wants to rid of Harper and they're talking about strategic voting, vote your conscience. Vote for a local and vote with your heart. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank you for this evening's opportunity, our moderator, and the thoughtful questions from both Laura and Caitlin. Um, they really do get at what the heart of Fundy Royal is. And uh, what I'm hearing at the door is that people don't feel that they're getting ahead and they're worried about the future for their children. And they want change, they really do. 
And I not only uh, am standing here and proud to be the candidate of change, but I also am proud of the party and the platform that we have and the possibility for change. I believe that uh, being a contributing member to the community is very important, and I've always done that, and I've always been available to people and uh, happy to talk with them about their ideas. I believe the ideas that will move Fundy Royal forward do come from, will come from the people within, and I look forward to having the opportunity to talk with them, talk about those opportunities and how they fit within the framework of the federal government and how we can support them. I also uh, want to make sure that people know that I'm going to Ottawa to fight for our piece of the pie. Uh, we're, during an election, we talk about all kinds of things that can happen in the country, and, and I do believe and I do have hope uh, that we can do better. But I want to go to Ottawa to make sure that at the end of the day, Fundy Royal has its piece of the pie and that we do move forward. So I, I thank you uh, for taking interest in watching, and uh, I ask for your support on Election Day. Ms. McKenzie? Well, the NDP has a very strong platform and one that will be very good for the people of Fundy Royal and the people of New Brunswick. We've balanced financial, financial, environmental, and social concerns, and we have a very steady-as-you-go approach to jobs in the economy. This is what we're hearing at the doorstep. It's important that we keep our youth in Fundy Royal and that we attract new people to the area. Um, we are not going to panic and overreact and, and implement tax cuts and uh, social and infrastructure spending. We're going to make sure that we have a balance of all three. The uh, Harper Conservatives have uh, run their course. They have a scandal-ridden uh, government that is uh, uh, big on austerity, and it's clear that this has not worked well for Fundy Royal and for the people here. I look forward to working with everybody in Fundy Royal. We have a diverse uh, uh, group of people. We have uh, f uh, farming and agriculture and uh, uh, urban areas as well and we have to make sure that we have policies and uh, practices that are good for everybody in Fundy Royal. I've knocked on a lot of doors, heard a lot of concerns. Our platform on child care, health care uh, and uh, all the other areas will be very strong for the people of Fundy Royal. Thank you. Thank Mr. You. Moore. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you to Rogers and to the Telegraph Journal for hosting us here today. And I do want to thank um, all of the candidates here. It uh, takes a great deal of courage to put your name forward in a federal election. They've all done that. And, and thank you for uh, the opportunity to speak directly to voters. As a government, uh, we've been providing direct support to Canadian families and to our communities. And as Member of Parliament for Fundy Royal, I've been proud to support those initiatives, whether it's the universal child care benefit, whether it's the family tax cut, whether it is income splitting for seniors, or voting to end the gun registry, or voting to support our communities on important projects, recreational projects that make all of our communities a better places to live. I've been very pleased as Member of Parliament that we have the programs in place to support our communities, support our families, and to support our seniors through income splitting, increasing the age credit, and providing support to them in their retirement years. On October 19th, we have a very important decision to make as voters. Canada is the envy of the world. We're the first G7 country that will have a balanced budget. We have 1.3 million net new jobs, and the worst of the economic downturn is behind us. That took strong leadership, and on October 19th, I would certainly appreciate your support when we vote in Fundy Royal. Thank you. Thank you all for your participation. Thank you to the panelists, and good night. <laughs>